In today's video, we will continue our study of the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. I will leave links to the videos of previous discussions of the Four Horsemen in the description box. We will begin where we left off with the Rider on the White Horse and then continue on to the Rider of the Red Horse. Revelation chapter 6 verse 2 states, And I saw and behold a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. In the previous video, we discussed the writer's bow. Today, we will discuss the crown that was given unto him. The word crown used here is translated from the Greek word stephanos, which is defined as crown and was the wreath or garland that was given as a prize to victors in public games. So this signifies that the rider of the white horse is successful with conquering those upon the earth through his poison and is rewarded with a victor's crown. It should also be noted here that the Latin equivalent for Stephanos is Corona. Please reference the previous video for the discussion on the poison associated with the bow. Now let's move on to the second seal and horseman. Revelation 6, 3-4 states, And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. We see from these verses that the rider of the red horse brings death through violence. He does this primarily through war. The Greek word for peace used in verse 4 is irene. Within the context of this scripture, it is defined as a state of national tranquility, exemption from the rage and havoc of war. So in Revelation 6, 4, when it states that the writer takes peace from the earth, the mechanism used is war. The last world war, which was World War II, took place from 1939 to 1945. A brief World War II summary states, The carnage of World War II was unprecedented and brought the world closest to the term total warfare. On average, 27,000 people were killed each day between September 1, 1939 until the formal surrender of Japan on September 2, 1945. Western technological advances had turned upon itself, bringing about the most destructive war in human history. The primary combatants were the Axis nations of Nazi Germany, Fascist Italy, Imperial Japan, and the Allied nations, Great Britain and its Commonwealth nations, the Soviet Union and the United States. Seven days after the suicide of Adolf Hitler, Germany unconditionally surrendered on May 7, 1945. The Japanese would go on to fight for nearly four more months until their surrender on September 2, which was brought on by the U.S. dropping atomic bombs on the Japanese towns of Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Despite winning the war, Britain largely lost much of its empire, which was outlined in the basis of the Atlantic Charter. The war precipitated the revival of the U.S. economy, and by the war's end, the nation would have a gross national product that was nearly greater than all the Allied and Axis powers combined. The USA and USSR emerged from World War II as global superpowers. The most destructive war in all of history. Its exact cost in human lives is unknown, but casualties in World War II may have totaled over 60 million service personnel and civilians killed. I reference World War II because it was the last world war. And before there can be a new world order, there usually is a world war. 
World War II ended over 76 years ago, so there's a large portion of us that have never lived through a war of this magnitude. This is why we have to pray and strive to fortify ourselves spiritually for the times that we are living in. The book of Revelation indicates that there will be a war that ushers in the final kingdom of the beast. And it's going to be devastating as all wars are. However, we have to consider that in the modern age, there are much more sophisticated weapons and additionally, we have to know that this war will likely include cyber warfare. We don't know when these things will happen, but when they do, because they will, we have to hold on to the word of Christ when he said, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. We know that in the physical world, there will be wars with mass numbers of casualties. But let's also consider the spiritual aspect as well. The book of Matthew chapter 10 verse verses 34 through 36 records a very important statement made by Jesus. Jesus states, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's foes shall be they of his own household. In verse 35, where it states to set at variance, it means to cut into two parts, cleave asunder or sever. Jesus is telling us that his presence amongst people brings separation, not unity. This is because everyone will not receive him. He uses the reference of the family structure to illustrate how those of us that follow him will be impacted on a very personal level. When we choose to do what's right and to follow Christ, it is likely that we will have family members and friends that turn against us or who will turn against us. And of course, we definitely see this being played out in America right now and even in other parts of the world. There are those of us in America that desire and choose to follow the God of the Bible. And unfortunately, there are many that don't. They desire to create a world where man is supreme and does not submit to the will of God. The sad part is that many within the church are so deceived and have willingly compromised their faith in order to gain a perceived status and acceptance in the world. And with the current pestilence, division has increased a hundredfold. But when you know that you are standing for what's right and you have the Holy Spirit and are led by Him, then you will have peace because you have received the Prince of Peace. More and more, God is shining the light on the lies that are being told and on the deeds of darkness to those of us who have eyes to see and ears to hear. But sadly, many don't. They have eyes but do not see and ears but do not hear because the wrath of God is upon them because of their sins and iniquities. Jesus talked more about the separation that would take place at the end of the age in the parable of the wheat and the tares. Matthew 13, 24 through 30 states, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? 
But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. As time moves us closer to the end of this world, it's going to become much clearer who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. In John 15, 18 through 19, Jesus says, If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. And there is a warning given in Revelation chapter 18 verse 4 for us to come out of Babylon, and it states, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. The separation is taking place. We see it happening around us, and it will continue and intensify as we draw nearer to the day of the Lord. I will conclude this video with a word from Christ as recorded in Matthew 24, 13, which states, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved.